So Monday Night Raw debuts January 11th, 1993. And all the guys are talking about how, how fun it is having hot crowds who are into everything. You don't say. <laughs> and they show the current stars of that era, Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Diesel, The Undertaker, Yokozuna, and Lex Luger, which is relevant because, you see, Hogan leaves the company. Well, hold on. Uh, We're getting ahead of ourselves here. i got to talk about this Raw thing. So the whole point of when they were talking about the debut of Raw, they want you to believe that Raw is just like this crazy, innovative show. And so for like five minutes, they're talking about Raw. It was it was live. And Vince is talking about, oh, this, the dangers of going live. Like no one had ever gone live before. And, oh, this show was live. And you had a live audience. And you got instant feedback because you were live. You go five fucking minutes on it being live. And then about ten minutes later, they have this other segment. And Vince goes... Well, you know, Raw wasn't live every week. We often taped. <laughs> and that was, yes, you did often tape because it wasn't live every week. And then, then they're making it out to be like Raw in the early days was like this giant juggernaut of wrestling. It wasn't. No. It was like it was like a live version of Superstars. I mean, there were squash matches on every show. You remember that first show, Damian Demento was in the main event. I mean, like, that was knocking the socks off people. I honestly don't, but okay. I do. Fucking, I'm, I'm 99% sure that uh, Damien Demento was the main event of the first Raw. And it was just like, you know, it was a little cool and, and everything like that. But the idea that, oh my god, when Raw kicked off, it was like the beginning of this giant era for the company. No! This place was still spiraling out of control, and it only got worse the first several years of Raw. The key is Hulk Hogan leaves the company on uh, on good terms. He wants to go make movies. They want to push younger guys. Well, so they t- there was a steroid scandal. <laughs> well, that was not mentioned. Like, th- th- I-, I hate to keep interrupting you, but fuck, this shit was such a fucking bullshit documentary. They're like, well, you know, we had all these these old guys, and we decided it was time for younger wrestlers. It's like, no, that's not what happened. Like, your Warriors and your Hogans and your Sids, like, they were all suspended or fired. I mean, what are you fucking talking about? And all you had left was the little guys. Well, they also had Lex Luger, who has been trying to say for what feels like 15 minutes. Yes. They rebranded him as the new American hero, and he ends up, he ends up being a major part of this episode. So we go back to WCW. Eric Bischoff has been rising through the company. Started as an announcer, and there was an opening for, exec- for an executive producer. And as pretty much everyone knows, from the moment Ted Turner bought this company, it's been a shit show. <laughs> he just put his random friends in, in there running the company and ruining things. So there was no competition, and Eric got the job. So there's clips of what WCW was like as he took over. Uh, at the approximately 19-minute mark of the show, you can see one heartthrob Buddy Wayne getting his ass kicked by Booker Yes, T. yes. Buddy Wayne was on this episode. Yes. That made me smile so, and tear up a little bit. Ain't going to lie. And then he, we, we can laugh. He got kicked in the mouth. <laughs> it's funny. He did. So He yeah. did the over-under. So, he, always, he always used to call it a headstand. We would do that in yeah. every match. He would whip me in and go, headstand in the corner. And it was never a headstand, but I didn't yeah. want to tell him that. So I just said, okay, we'll do the headstand in the corner. U- Ultimo Dragon would do the headstand in the corner. Yes, he would actually do a headstand. Yes. I would just do the over-under. So Bischoff didn't want to be a southern company anymore, so he fired all the announcers with southern accents, even though most of them were great. Yeah. And I'm going to skip ahead here. He fires all the announcers with southern accents, and then when he has a chance to go national in primetime on Nitro, he hires Steve McMichael. <laughs> yes. Right. What happened? Downgrade. I don't understand. So they go to they start doing shows at the Disney Studios in Orlando, and Hogan is shooting Thunder in Paradise next door. And as, as they all say, they all agree to this story. Bischoff and Flair just walk over and start to recruit him. Yeah, him well, I was I was happy because when remember when I tweeted this documentary sucks. Mm-hmm. It was because the very first like three minutes they kind of do a preview of it, and they give you the impression that like Hulk Hogan was stolen away from WWE. Which, of course, he wasn't. He left. He went to Japan. He made some fucking movies. He was doing jack shit. And they went over and they recruited the guy. And, like, throughout the show, the story they tell you is how Eric Bischoff in WCW... Well, actually, it was Ted Turner, I should... I mean, it was actually Eric, but they said it was Ted Turner. Ted used all of his money to steal away all of this talent. 
in virtually no circumstance did this happen. What happened was Vince got sick of everybody. Yeah. Hogan, he thought, was too old. Randy Savage, he thought, was too old. Like, Lex Luger was working without a fucking contract. They're talking about, oh, this huge star, one of the top guys, Lex Luger. It's like, no, they weren't doing shit with him. He was going to be in, like, some tag team or something like that. He was working with it. How important could the fucking guy be if he was working without a contract? Alundra Blaze. Alundra Blaze, they fired her without making her drop the title. She isn't doing jack shit. So they hired her, and they like, still have the belt. All of these things, they're mm-hmm. acting like, oh, and it's it's always Miz. Like, Miz Miz's is all role, over the show. His role as a talking head is to not believe something happened. Yeah. What? Alundra Blaze now? I'm like, Alundra fucking Blaze? He was very irritating on the show. They so blew that out of proportion. But anyway, I want to say one thing about this Eric Bischoff guy. Brilliant guy at the beginning. But his brilliance... It actually wasn't brilliance, as I'll explain, but sometimes brilliance is simplicity. His brilliance was his downfall. What he did was he hired the guys that Vince thought were were too old, Mm -hmm. and Vince had no place for them because they were, quote, old, all of whom, by the way, are younger than most of the main eventers in the Elimination Chamber this year. But anyway, Vince thought they were too old, and Eric was like, they're not too old. They'll still draw. And so he took Hogan, who like was not even in wrestling. He took Macho Man, who Vince had made an announcer. And then he started taking all these guys, like what the fuck was Hacksaw Jim Duggan doing or any of these guys? He started taking these guys that Vince had pretty much been done with, and he pushed them. And even though the, the, even though they had been stars in the 80s, like all of those little kids in the 80s, all of those little Hulkamaniacs, now they were teenagers. And so they were like, holy shit, this whole, this, let's, let me watch this Hulk Hogan guy. And they watched the show, and then, you know, they see Liger and Pillman or whatever, and like, this is fucking cool. But anyway, Eric's brilliance was that he realized that these guys were not past their prime. They could still be used, and they could still draw, and they did. There was still value there. His downfall was he just never realized, well, you got to make some new stars at some point. I mean, right. this is a broken record, but he just kept pushing these same fucking guys until they no longer drew, and then they were actively destroying the company because nobody wanted to see another main event with Hulk Hogan and fucking Roddy Piper, and then the the rails go off the ship. But he did make some very, very intelligent moves early in signing some stars that Vince had no use for. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.